Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about NFL Draft Bust Analytics. And in this video, uh, we're going to highlight various players that uh, some would consider busts, you know, players that were drafted fairly high and didn't really uh, give the type of output that people expected them to, uh, to, to one, give you some perspective on the value of analytics, because in many cases, the, these busts had major red flags on paper, uh, but two, just to give you a different sort of uh, view or, or viewpoint or just general knowledge about data and analytics. Uh, to, to kind of help you in terms of evaluation in the future. Uh, so if you're new to this channel and new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. With all that stuff out of the way, let's get to Ronnie Brown. Uh, Ronnie Brown, of course, uh, was a running back that was drafted in the 2005 NFL Draft class. He's cited by many, including guys like Cadillac Williams and Cedric Benson, to be the first shots to kind of devalue the running back position uh, because... Ronnie Brown, Cadillac Williams, and Cedric Benson didn't exactly live up to the expectations of being a running back taken in the top five. But I hope this video kind of highlights that there was some questionable stuff on paper with these players to where they should never have been top five picks to begin with. Uh, so in this video, we're just going to highlight some of those things and starting with uh, Cadillac Williams, uh, oh not Cadillac Williams, excuse me, but Ronnie Brown's uh, production. Uh, Ronnie Brown had a 48.23 market share production score, uh, didn't hit the all-pro career threshold, five-time Pro Bowl career threshold, or three-time Pro Bowl career threshold. He definitely went to one Pro Bowl in his career, but only one. And when you look at the averages at the position, didn't hit the all-pro career average, Pro Bowl career average, or starter career average by a sizable margin as well. My question to the viewer right now, uh, or the listener, is why would you draft a running back in the top five of any NFL draft class? who doesn't look like an all-pro player and doesn't look like a multiple Pro Bowl player. Why would you do that? Um, and it's not to say that Ronnie Brown had a terrible NFL career either, but he doesn't look like a generational running back. Um, he did have good athleticism traits though. He had a 75.46 explosive lower body strength score, a 96.93 speed score, and a 91.72 flexibility score. So he definitely had good athleticism traits. Definitely. And I think in many ways his athleticism traits um, is what helped him to sustain a career in the NFL, despite all the stuff that was saying to not draft him. But again, you have to question, why would you take a guy in the top five where the production data doesn't look like a generational running back and the athleticism data is definitely good, but then you look at the age data as well, which is kind of the final nail in the coffin, which is that Ronnie Brown's age score was at 18.31 out of 100. The all-pro career score for age is 79, and the Pro Bowl career score is 57, meaning 100% of multiple all-pro running backs had at least a 79 or higher age score, and 100% of multiple Pro Bowl running backs had at least a 57 or higher score. So from the get-go, Ronnie Brown would be, he doesn't have generational running back production. He doesn't have age indicative of an all-pro to Pro Bowl player. So why would you take a player like this in the top five? And athleticism trait wise, Ronnie Brown, fantastic. I think in many ways, Ronnie Brown's athleticism uh, would have bumped him up into maybe a day two prospect in many ways um, or better, um, depending on, you know, um, how the draft shaped out. Because I didn't do a full rundown of this draft class, but he may have just ended up being a, a first rounder just because of how weak the class was potentially. But the bottom line is Ronnie Brown is someone who never should have been a top five overall pick. But ultimately, this is the issue with the draft is that there is a lack of uh, just a lack of knowledge and understanding of the things on paper that can derail a prospect or at least make you have a false impression of what their potential is long term. Um, so in many ways, again, Ronnie Brown should never have been a top five overall selection. He's not a generational running back. He obviously didn't end up becoming a generational running back. And this just goes to show that the reason why you can find running backs in the fifth round, the sixth round, the seventh round, or even UDFAs is not because you can find them anywhere. It's because evaluators are allowing them to be found anywhere, that they don't have a good grasp on how to evaluate the position as efficiently as they should. Don't follow that stuff out of the way. 
course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Jim Metrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.